we would be continuing on uh, the sums which are uh, related to the design of journal bearing so we would just try to understand the few basic sums which are usually asked for 15 marks for the semester and examination so the textbook what we are referring here is jvk das and the data handbook here is our uh, dr likaya as prescribed by video syllabus uh, now the journal bearing design what we have on left side uh, this happens to be the notes and here what we see on the right side is the data handbook now as uh, discussed with the previous sums uh, so we know a few essential data are very much needed to solve the sums but here this is one critical problem wherein most of the data are not given directly so we are asked to assume based on uh, certain conditions that are further to be assumed right so here uh, it's a complete 360 degree covered journal bearing so the beta angle the beta will be 360 degrees here so on reading the problem a journal bearing is required to be designed for a rotary compressor for operating at a speed of 1500 rpm the bearing is to withstand a load of 4500 newtons and the diameter of the main shaft is to be 50 millimeters so with these data is given to us, uh, we are supposed to find the dimensions of bearing, which includes length and diameter, uh, followed with viscosity of the oil to be used, and the coefficient of friction, heat generated, heat dissipated, and the heat to be removed by artificial cooling, if necessary, and last one being the Sommerfeld number. Now usually to solve the problem, what we need here is we need to know what is the kind of oil that is used. Mm -hmm. That is either A, B, C, D, or E. And then also we need to know its viscosity that is not given here. And along with that, the operating temperature is also not being mentioned. The operating temperature is not mentioned. The viscosity is not given. And then uh, we also don't know the length of the journal. The length of the journal is still unknown to us. And along with that, the bearing pressure P is also no, not known. Only thing that is known here is load W and the diameter 50. All right, so and also we don't know the clearance value what we have. So usually the diametral clearance is written as C, which is not known to us. So uh, that is one parameter which is missing out. So to begin this, uh, since most of the data are not known, so the first step what we need to look for is, we need to directly get into the table 24.2. So on the right side of the screen, what we see here is the data handbook. So this is the table, what we have 24.2. Now in this, uh, the selection of this uh, oil and the operating conditions are totally dependent on where exactly is the application related to. Now the application, what we are designing here is for rotary compressor. So please look for the rotary compressor in the first column. So here we have our reciprocating pumps and compressor. So this is where we see the reciprocating and pump compressor. So here uh, the application is further uh, extended for main bearings, crank pin, and also the wrist pin. So we are designing for the entire main compressor itself. So we follow with the first row reading, which is associated for main bearing conditions. So in this, uh, the value of 1.6, what we see here, that is where the pointer is located. It represents the maximum pressure which is in uh, megapascals. So I write it on the left side. So P max is 1.66 megapascals. So one megapascal is one Newton per millimeter square. So since we substitute all the values of length and diameter in meters, we need to go back to its expression in meters. So on doing the so, we get 1.66 into 10 power of six Newton per meter square. So that is one end. And then we know the diametral clearance ratio that a psi should be less than 0.001. It's not less than or equal to, it should be less than 0 0.001. And then the uh, ratio L by D should be ranging from 1 to 2.2. And then the viscosity is 30. The viscosity, what we get here is uh, 30 megapascals, uh, sorry, uh, 30 uh, centipoises. So on converting the same into pascals, we get it as 30 into 10 power of minus 3 pascals. So uh, that is one data what we need to look for. And then along with the same, we also have the bearing, the modulus S double dash for reciprocating pumps. What we have S double dash is 
in SI units. So we need to have it as 72.5 into 10 power of minus 9 units. Right. So these data are written here. So we'll go back to the sum here, which has already been solved. So the diametral clearance should be C by D less than 0 0.0001. And the ratio of L by D should be between 1 to 1.2.22. And the absolute viscosity is 13 to 10 power of minus 3 pascals. The bearing modulus S dash is 72.5 into 10 power of minus 9. So this is the first step which we need to follow in order to gain the values which are not given in this conditions. All right, so we'll start off with the sum now with these data has been taken from table 24.2. Firstly, uh, let's determine the parameters L and D. Now, since the ratio, it is given from 1 to 2.2. So I the first trial starts up with 1, that is the least value. So on substituting the same L by D, we know the diameter is 50 millimeters, which is given. This is the main shaft. Main shaft is known as the journal. And the outer casing, which is known as bearing, that has a different diameter. So that is also that will also be found in the sum. So the main shaft has a diameter of 50. On taking the ratio of L by D as 50, we get length also as 50 into 10 power of minus 3 meters. So uh, as uh, solved in the previous sums, we know pressure is equal to load by area. Load is W, and L and D are its corresponding cross-sectional areas of the journal. So W is 4,500 newtons. And then length, which we have already determined, 15 to 10 power of minus 3 meters, and the diameter is 15 to 10 power of minus 3. So on solving the same equation, we get the value as 1.8 into 10 power of 6 newton per meter square. All right. So we need to cross-check whether this value is well within the limit. See, in the sum where we took for uh, the main, and just uh, go through the compressor part, what we have. See, this is the reciprocating and uh, reciprocating pump and the compressor. So here, the maximum allowable pressure is 1.66. But eventually, what we have got is 1.8. Eight. So this 1.8 into 10 power of 6 is higher than 1.66, so which is exceeding this value of 1.66. Therefore, this trial is denied. So that means to say, we cannot take the ratio of L by D as 1 because it is resulting in a pressure of 1.8 into 10 power of 6 newton per meter square. So therefore, I'll have to go with the next trial by going for its next higher ratio. So L by D, we randomly take it 1.5. So you can still uh, do it 1.3 or 1.4. That doesn't mean that uh, what you have done is wrong. So it's randomly taken a value. I mean, we randomly take a value of 1.5 here. So on taking the same L by D is 1.5. Therefore, length becomes 1.5 times, times its diameter. So we end up getting a value of 75 millimeters as its length. So 75 into 10 power of minus 3 meters is its dimension. So on substituting in the value of P is equal to W into L, W by LD, so we get this as 1.22 into 10 power of 6 newton per meter square, which is less than 1.66. Therefore, the ratio what I have taken here is suitable for my conditions. Right. So hence, the length what I am going to take henceforth is now 75 millimeters. And the length of the diameter of the bearing, the journal is also 70, uh, 50 millimeters. So on doing the same, we now uh, move ahead with the diametral clearance ratio. We know the formula, psi is equal to C by D. The psi is equal to C by D. So I'll go back to the previous condition, which we used in the data handbook. So here, please look at the pointer that I'm moving here. So this is where this is what our uh, data recommends. It should be less than 0 0.001. So I, I now take a value of 0 0.001, which is less than. 0 0.001. So with this, uh, I now cross multiply this. The diametral clearance is now taken as psi into d. So psi is 0 0.009 into d of uh, 50. So on doing the same, I get the diametral clearance c as 0 0.45 millimeters. Right now, uh, diameter of the bearing. So as I said, you we don't have the diameter of the bearing. So diameter of the bearing is now taken as capital D, which is equal to uh, the journal diameter plus the clearance what we have got now. So 50 plus for 0 0.45. So this becomes 50.045 millimeters. That is 50.045 into 10 power of minus 3 meters. This becomes the journal, I mean the bearing diameter. All right. So with these data is known to us. So the diameter of the bearing is uh, 50.045 into 10 power of minus 3 and the length is 75 into 10 power of minus 3 meters. Therefore, 
the working pressure what we get according to this is 1.2 into 10 power of 6 newton per meter square all right so this is what are our elementary data in terms of its geometrical dimensions and with respect to the pressure and also the viscosity as determined now uh, moving on to uh, this is what is asked in the first case so we are done with the first case we are done with length in the diameter of the bearing bushes next we'll find how, how do we go ahead with the viscosity now uh, we don't know the temperature at which uh, this entire journal bearing is operating so we now assume the operating temperature as 55 degrees so this 55 degrees is the operating temperature it is nowhere written in the table it is our assumption okay you can also assume it as 60 degrees or 65 degrees so usually since we have the cooling medium in this the temperature will not go very high so let's limit this to 55 degrees as our operating temperature now to get the viscosity the viscosity is already prescribed here see in the data handbook for the reciprocating pumps at a pressure of 1.66 we get the viscosity as 30 into 10 power of minus 3 centipoles that is uh, 30 into 10 power of minus 3 pascals now uh, we need to know what exactly is this uh, oil by looking into the figure 24.1 i'll now move on to the figure 24.51 in the data handbook Twenty-four point two is the figure that we need to look now. So this is the figure. So twenty-four point two in this, uh, we know the operating temperature is fifty-five. So for this operating temperature fifty-five, the way how we uh, take up this uh, value here is for a temperature reading of fifty-five. Uh, first, I'll start writing a straight line here. So this is where uh, the straight line goes here. This is our reading. 55. I don't know where exactly it ends up, so I'll just leave the line here, and then uh, with the temperature, sorry, with the velocity, with, with the absolute viscosity, 13 to 10 power of minus 3. So that is this is where our reading is 30. So at this 30, let's see which is the closest curve that is getting intersected. So at intersecting point, we now have oil E. So out of this, oil E. That is the line E is the one which is correlating here. So this is the point that we need to look here. So it is now getting in line with the line E, which is there in the curve. Right. So therefore, from table 24, sorry, sorry, from table 20, from figure 24.2, what we see here, the oil what we need to select here is E. Right. So on selecting this, we need to know its value in terms of its specific gravity at its respective temperature all right so uh, let's not go much bother about its uh, specific gravity because it is possible for us to find the bearing modulus without knowing its specific gravity or without the need of specific gravity so uh, with this data known to us so we now find the bearing modulus bearing modulus is now written as eta into n dash by t which is also a part of our uh, petrov's equation so substitute all the values. Eta is 10 power of my 13 to 10 power of minus 3 pascals, and uh, speed n dash is the critical speed and RPS. So that's the reason why we divide by 60, 1500 by 60 divided by the previously that is the newly determined the value p. So on doing the same, we get the bearing modulus as 625 into 10 power of minus 9 units. So this value what we get here bearing modulus should be greater than the value what we took from the table 24.2. Right, so uh, this is the table where we got the value of 24.2, which we have already written it. So here, this is the value of 72.5 is our bearing modulus what we have for this. So 625 is greater than 72.5 into 10 power of minus nine. Therefore, the kind of uh, film that is produced here is a thick film, which is acceptable for us. All right, so that's what I, Second condition here is the viscosity of the oil to be used and hence suggest the appropriate oil. So the oil that is suggested here is oil grade E. So what is that oil grade E? So oil grade E is nothing but SA20 oil. So I mean I'll tell you how do we say what is that oil? 
So by looking into the table 24.1, so alphabet E, this is what our condition here is. So alphabet E represents alphabet E represents SA20 oil. So that's what is written here. So SA20 is the oil that has been used, recommended for this application based on our calculations. All right. So a third part, what is we are supposed to find here is we need to find the coefficient of friction. Now this coefficient of friction is, it can be found by using three methods. One is the Petrov's equation, second is Mackey's equation, and third is the Raymond Boyd curve. Now, uh, since uh, we don't know which is to be used, so under such conditions, so to rely on a very high precise value, so we go with, uh, we use the equation which is Mackey's equation to determine the coefficient of friction. So here coefficient of friction, we use uh, Mackey's equation which is there in uh, equation 24.22. I'll just show you where exactly is this equation in the data handbook. So this is where our equation here is, 24.22. So this is our Mackey's equation. So this is our Mackey's equation, mu is equal to Ka into mn dash by p into one by psi into 10 power of minus 10 plus delta mu. Now for 360 degrees, so the value of Ka is 1.95 into 10 power of 11 for the 360 degrees. This is Ka value, it's not beta. It is Ka value itself. The second expression for Ka. So this will be the equation which is used as Ka. And uh, delta mu, uh, we need to find the ratio of L by D. So the ratio of L by D, what we took here is 1.5, which is the part of a solution in the first case. See here, this is where our L by D is. Now, uh, this value of L by D is within the range from 0 0.75 to 2.8. So if the L by D is between this span length, then we can take L as, sorry, delta mu as 0 0.02 directly, 0 0.002 directly. So Ka is known to us, delta mu is known to us, and all the further associated readings are also available to us. So on substituting the same, Ka is now what we have got in this equation, 1.95 to 10 power of 11 into, uh, eta is our, uh, what is the condition? Eta is our 30 into 10 power of minus three. We can substitute the same and also, N dash is uh, critical speed in RPS 1500 divided by 60 divided by the pressure what we have got. So this constant, we have already done it. Therefore, I now substitute this constant. So this constant is already done in the previous step. So it is giving us an answer of 625 to 10 power of minus nine. So that's what is written here. And one by psi is the, psi is the clear diameter clearance ratio, which is 0 0.009 multiplied with 10 power of minus 10 is the one which is asked and delta mu is also the constant what we have got. So on doing the same, the coefficient of friction, what we get here is 0 0.015542. All right, so that was our third part, which we were supposed to find. Next, we'll move on to heat generated and heat dissipated and followed with the amount of heat to be removed. So as compared to the previous one, so we know how to find the heat generated formula. Uh, which you see it in the equation 24.72. So in uh, design data handbook, uh, Lingaya, so we have, we let's go through this equation 24.72 here. So this is the equation what we have, mu is equal to PLD into velocity. Right, so this is heat J, heat, Hg is heat generated, mu into PLD into V. Please look at the pointer where I'm highlighting here. So the same equation is now substituted. So mu, we have already de determined from the previous case, P into LD. So P into LD, uh, we know what is the value of pressure. Pressure is now, uh, in the previous case, what was our value? P is 1.2 to 10 power of uh, six and length is, we got 75 millimeters and the diameter is 60 millimeters. So we get the value of PLD as 4,500. And uh, I mean, you can so you can use it separately. I mean, you can solve it separately by taking what is the value of P, L, and D. Be careful once when you do it, the value of length and diameter should be in meters. It should not be in millimeters. 
on doing the same we find the velocity velocity is pi d n by 60 pi and the diameter yet again we need to substitute in meters and then the speed is 1500 by 60 pi d n by 60 it is not pi d into n dash pi d n n is rpm n dash is rps so on doing the same we get the heat generated is 274.6 watts now heat dissipated is uh, seen underneath the uh, the same equation 24.77 so i'll just show you where exactly this equation is so 24.77 this is the equation what we have that is the heat dissipated in our data handbook so h d is c a into the operating temperature minus the ambient temperature now uh, we have assumed the operating temperature as uh, 55 degrees and uh, we yet again assume the ambient temperature as 25 Ambient temperature is the room temperature and the working temperature is nothing but our operating temperature T. So on taking the, uh, that is on assuming 25 here. So we now substitute all the values. Now what is the value of C? Now let's go back to the equation what we see here. In the data handbook, the value of C is dependent on various operating conditions. The operating conditions, what we need to look for is uh, we don't know whether we have uh, the air circulation or not in this bearing. So with this condition of uh, not knowing whether we have air circulation or not here. So we use this condition where the bearing located in air circulation and also which is completely immersed in oil bath. Okay. So uh, we don't know what is the operating condition. So we assume this operating condition. So we get the value of C as 11.36 into 10 power of minus 3 kilowatt per meter square Kelvin. And this is our C value. And what is our A? A is the effective surface area, which is expressed as 25 into DL in meter square. So the value of D and L should be in meters. So 25 into D into L is what we do here. So we get the corresponding values. Now uh, we express the value, I mean the temperature in Kelvin, so on taking the difference in temperature in Kelvin, we take the temperature difference between 55 and 25. We need not have to divide it by two. We need not have to divide it by two. So we directly express the value uh, between the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature. So on taking the temperature difference, uh, so in terms of Kelvin, uh, the operating temperature is 55 plus 273 and the ambient temperature is 25 plus 273. So just take the difference between them and multiply here. So we end up getting a value here as 30 degree Kelvin. It's not 50, it will be 30 degree Kelvin. So it is just the difference between 50 and 25. Because here in the data and book, it's just taken as the difference between the ambient and the operating, I mean the operating and the ambient condition. Therefore, you need not have to divide it by two. It's just the closest equation that they have taken to overcome the errors that are probably happening in the assumption. So we just take the value of directly here. So the heat dissipated, what we uh, get here is now, it will be 30 degrees Kelvin. So uh, we substitute uh, the value of heat dissipated in this condition by knowing the temperature difference as 30 degrees Kelvin. So it will be 11.36 into 10 power of, uh, so 11.36 into 0 0.0937 into 30. And right, so we get a value close to 32 watts here. So we get a value of 31.8. So let's round it up to 32 watts. So the heat to be removed, that is artificial cooling, which is needed to uh, cool down the entire system is now 274 minus 32. So 274 minus 32 will be the answer that will be the final answer that is required for us to uh, suggest the amount of heat that is to be removed by using artificial cooling. Okay, that, that's six percent. Now to find the sum of fault number, uh, we know the equation sum of fault number is now expressed as eta into n dash by t divided by one by psi square. In case if you don't know where exactly is this formula is, the sum of fault number is actually a part of, you can see the sum of fault number in most of the curve. Okay, sum of fault number is one n eta into n dash by t into one by psi square. So this is where you see, you can find this uh, S value in most of the cases. Now, if you still want to know what exactly is this, uh, you can uh, refer the equation number. 
So on substituting the same, we get the sum of all number as 0 0.7716. All right, so the sum, uh, what we have solved here, it gives us what exactly is the sum of all number required for us for the respective oil and heat generated, heat dissipated, and the artificial cooling that is necessary to take away how much amount of heat from it, and the coefficient of friction for the respective oil at the respective operating conditions and the physical dimensions of these uh, journal parent. Right, so usually such sums will be asked for uh, marks slightly greater than 10 also. Okay, this is the complete design for the journal parent. Right, thank you.